Hey everyone, uh, time for another uh, in-depth look at how to play another great and long classic guitar solo. Uh, well, not so much long, to tell you the truth. It's just that in this particular case, we'll actually be looking at five guitar solos uh, because, well, that's how many this song has. And we're going to tackle them all, uh, along with the rhythm parts. So basically the whole damn thing. Uh, these five solos, interestingly enough, were put down not by Joe Perry or Brad Whitford of Aerosmith, but by two of the seven 70s greatest session players in Steve Hunter and Dick Wagner. The hows and whys of how this came to be, I explain in my commentary following my performance of this one, which you can find right down there in the description box if you want to check it out. There is a hell of a lot one can learn from these solos. Hunter and Wagner were two of the greatest blues-based rock and hard rock soloists from the 70s and are well worth studying and emulating and stealing licks from. Uh, so uh, let's get started because this is likely going to take a while, 40 or 45 minutes probably. Now these solos at times are played pretty fast and loose and sometimes uh, they get a little bit lost in the mix. So I had a bit of a hard go of it at times trying to figure out exactly what they were doing but I think I got it pretty close. That said, the parts that may not be exactly note for note to the recording still sound good. And if it sounds good, it is good, as the immortal Eddie Van Halen once said. So we are in standard tuning for this one, working predominantly in G major, but we'll often find ourselves in the more comfortable relative minor boxes of E minor, both down here at the neck and up here at the 12th fret position. Uh, actually, I believe that four of the solos, the first two and the last two, are in G major, while the longer middle solo starts in E and then, no, starts in A and then jumps to E and then jumps back to G major. Uh, so let's close in here a little bit and get started with the, uh, the intro and opening solo by Steve Hunter. All right, let's have a look at this fantastic song with its five equally fantastic solos uh, by Steve Hunter and Dick Wagner. And uh, like I said, we're in uh, standard tuning with this one, and it starts off with a couple of uh, simulated train whistles. Get my fingers in the shot here. And uh, that is in the E minor pentatonic. We've got our index finger on 12 of the B string, our ring finger on 14 of the G, and we're gonna bend 14. Uh, we're gonna hit all three strings, the G, the B, and the open E. And we're gonna bend just the G string. And you're gonna release it and bend it again. Keeping uh, your finger on 12 of the B still. If you get a little bit of dissonance between the notes, that's fine, but try to get that up to pitch. And then slide out of it. And then we're to this. So you're going to pull off uh, 5 to 3 to open B. But when you pull off 3 to open B, you're going to grab the open E with it. And then you're going to quickly grab 2 of the D string. And then you're going to do it again. And then we're into the first solo. And I'm going to play through the first solo uh, at a slower speed. And then we'll dig into uh, how it's played. This solo, uh, all the solos, are pretty much all in the pentatonic. So I'm not going to go through these solos fret by fret number and finger position by finger position. Uh, we're in the pentatonic. I'm just going to play through each lick slowly. You know where we're working. You know which frets are the pentatonic. And uh, so that's the way we're going to go about this one. Uh, but uh, this is the first solo. So we're starting off with the same uh, kind of train whistle, but just a slow bend release bend. And then this lick. 
right up the pentatonic starting at the 12th fret of the high E. A little hammer on pull off from 12 to 14 of the G. And then we're going to slide into 17 of the B. A little pre-bend of 17 of the high E. Double down pick of the 17 of the B. And then a little scale run. And that's tricky at speed because uh, you're going from hammer-ons to pull-offs and, and vice versa. So. Now these guys, when they're playing in the pentatonic, uh, the pentatonic here in E minor is, uh, you know, on the on the D and the G string are uh, 12, 14, 12, 14. These two 14s, they do a lot of play between those two frets, like this. A lot of uh, rolling back and forth on the 14s. They do that do that a number of times in these solos. So that little scale run again. And then we're into this. A little blues lick right there, a little e, e pentatonic blues lick. A little, and then slow bend, bend release, slow bend. And again, there they're rolling up the 14s. between 12 and 14 of the D and then finishing on 12 and then sliding out of it. So slowly through the whole first solo. And then we're into the first verse. Starts with a G power chord. Nothing too difficult here for the verses, but it's a lot of fun to play. It's basically this, G to the open E. Up to A, back to G. Down to G flat and back to G, except it's all with power chords just bouncing your uh, your index finger on and off. A. G. A. And then there's two verses of that, and then we're into the second solo, also by Steve Hunter, and it goes something like this. So we're going to play the first six or seven notes of this just with our index finger. We're going to slide into 17 of the B string. Then we're going to back up to 15. And now it gets a little tricky. Uh, we're going to hit 15 again and quickly slide it back to 14. And then we're going to hit 14, quickly slide it back to 12. And then we're going to jump up here to 14 of the B. And then do the same thing. Hit 14 and slide it back to 12. So the only uh, three that you do not slide on are the first two. You're sliding into that one. And now we start sliding. Don't slide. 
slide. And then we're into this. On the D and the A string, just in the pentatonic. Now you do not have to play that with one finger. You can slide it with your ring finger. And then switch to your index finger. But you, you want to have your index finger here on 14 to slide back to 12 of the G. So you're right in position to play that next lick. And then we're into this. Pre-bend, 14 of the G. Just lots of basic blues licks there. And again, there they are rolling on that on those 14s. And now they're rolling on the 12s. And then we're into this. Bending 14 of the G. And then we're into this. Bending 15 of the B and getting your pinky underneath it on the high E. Finishing up with a full step bend at 15 of the B with vibrato. And uh, so let me run through that whole second solo slowly. And that is the second solo, and then we're back into the uh, the verses again, the second verse. Back into this again. And coming out of the, this verse, we end up in an E power chord. And then we're into this lick. And uh, that's pretty easy. It's an E power chord. Open E to two to three. E power chord. A little uh, chromatic there from two to one to open on the A. And this is where the main solo, the third solo, comes in. The rhythm guitar underneath now switches to A. It's playing this exact same thing, but in A. Exact same thing you were playing up here, just move down one set of strings. Not one set of strings, you know what I mean. exact same fingering. Uh, and uh, coming out of that, there's going to be a transition in the solo where they transition. Uh, the solo starts in A and then it moves to E and then transitions back to G major. And at that transition point, here's what the rhythm guitars are doing. Goes to B and then it chromatically moves those power chords all the way up to G. back to the main riff again. Two, three, four. 
and then slide out of that back to that G. And uh, so here is the third solo. That's the third solo. That's the longest of the five. So it starts on the seventh fret of the G and the B, pre-bending both of those strings and then releasing them. And then five on the G up to seven of the D. Now this lick right there in the uh, original studio recording, it's very loosely played. It's kind of lost in the mix. It's very difficult to hear exactly what he's doing, but this is as close as I could get it, and it sounds pretty good, and it sounds pretty close, but I don't think it's exact. But here's what I'm doing, and like I, like I said, play it loose, play it to, you know, and it's very fast. So it, here's what I'm doing. And finishing up on a down the fifth fret of the B and the, uh, the high E. Bending seven of the G. Just basic little blues like there. And, uh, but at speed, you know, it's very difficult to hear exactly what he's doing, so. Kind of like that. And then we're gonna slide into 10 of the B. And here's where they deviate a little bit from the pentatonic. We're going to do a little bit of chromatic work here. Ten, nine, eight. Nine, eight, seven of the G. And a bit of a stretch there from five to seven to nine, back to five of the G. Finishing up with a double hit of seven of the uh, D. And that's the next lick. Nothing too difficult there, right there on the uh, the fives and sevens of the D and the G. And then we're into this. And at this point, uh, they've switched back into E. So the opening of the solo was in A, and at this point they've switched to E. So now we're soloing, soloing in E minor. So we're sliding into a nine of the G. Couple of little bends there at 10 of the B. And this is 9 to 12 on the D and the G. So up to that point slowly. this. That's a bit of a long phrase right there, but we're going to break that down a little bit. So we're going to slide into 14 of the G, 
And as we're sliding into it, we're going to start bending it. And then we're going to grab 12 of the B and the high E. Rolling on the 12s there of the B and the high E. Bending 15. So uh, that little lick. And here's the long phrase. One more time. And here, He's hitting the blue note right there in the E minor pentatonic, so that's a little deviation from the uh, the uh, pentatonic vibrato. And this is another long phrase. And again, they're rolling on those 14s in the pentatonic. One more time. And at speed, that's all very fast. with a full step bend, finishing up there at 15 of the high E. And that's the next little lick. Just bouncing from 12 to 15 on the E and the B. And a little bit of string skipping going on here. So we're rolling. That's pretty easy. That's uh, right. So we're going up to 14 of the D and then we're string skipping back down to 14 of the B and then back up to 14 of the D. And then 12, 12, finishing up on 14 of the D. So then we're going to slide into 16 of the uh, of the uh, G string, and now we're going to work in this little extension box of the E minor pentatonic. Just rolling right down that little triad right there, and there we're bouncing off uh, 17 and 16 of the high E after that bend and then bend it again and then we got a little scale run right up the pentatonic and then we're going to slide back into 17 of the B and then all the way up to 22 pull off the 19 Full step bend at 22, slide out of it. And uh, so that is the whole third solo. I'm gonna run through the whole thing slowly.
All right, so now we're getting into the uh, the section of the song which is closer to the Yardbirds version of Train Kept a Rolling, where they pick up the pace and uh, they're playing the exact same chords, but at a, a, a different melody and uh, slightly different uh, uh, picking technique going on here. But uh, same chords, so it's kind of like. But before we get to that, coming out of the uh, the third solo, we're going down to an E power chord, and then he plays, I think, six, maybe eight more train whistles. Let's them ring. And that's when we get into... So I think there's two verses of that. And then we're into the fourth solo. This is kind of the simulated live section of the song. And this is where Dick Wagner starts soloing. And this is Dick Wagner's first solo. So again, the, the opening of this solo is very loosely played, but I'm pretty sure this is what he's doing. He's got his uh, index finger on uh, 14 of the G, and he's got his pinky barring 15 of the B and the E, and he's grabbing two notes, little uh, double stops here. A little bend, release, bend again. And on the upstroke, he's grabbing uh, the E and the B. So I think he does it four times. And it's all very loose, uh, this part of the song. And uh, to finish up, he's going bend. So he's bend 14 on the upstroke, grab 15 of the B, bend again, and then upstroke on the 15 of the high E. That kind of thing right there. So this whole opening part. That's pretty much how it goes right there. So one more time. And that leads into that little double stop work there in the E minor pentatonic. And then we're into this. A little blues lick right there. Finishing up with a little roll on the twelves. I think he does it five times. And then a step and a half bend at 15 of the high E, and then two full step bends, releasing the last one. Into that lick with vibrato. So the first one, full a uh, step and a half. Second one. That's it. I was making little mistakes there. I just wanted to get that right. And then to finish up that solo, we're going to slide into 14 again, bending it as we do. Down that little blues lick. And that 
finishes up that solo. I'm going to run through that whole solo slowly. And that's the fourth solo. And then we're into this again. And, uh, and after, I think it's like the fifth verse, then we're into the fifth solo, also by uh, Dick Wagner. And that goes kind of like this. Kind of like that. So uh, that starts sliding two to two to uh, four on the G, and then grabbing the two open strings on the bottom. I think you do that twice. Get my fingers in frame here. Just on the twos and open strings there. And uh, so two times. And then one more time. And then a little down, up, down on the two open strings. And we're going to go eight, seven, five on the uh, B string. And then grab seven and bend it and give it some vibrato. A little half step bend with vibrato. And then we're into this. So, we're back into the E minor pentatonic here at the 12th fret position. And that is a two-step bend on the 15 of the B. Into that little blues lick there on 15 of the B and 12 of the high E. And then a full a step and a half bend of the 15 of the high E. And then a full step bend. Sorry. And then we're going to string skip up to uh, 14 of the G. Off that 12 of the high E. And then we're going to get our bar back on 15 of the B and the E. And finish up 12 to 14 on the G and the D. So at speed, this is a lot of little tricky little work here. So uh, where were we? Uh, well, let's take this solo from the top uh, slowly. Finishes up the middle of that solo. Finishes up there on uh, 14 of the D. And then we're into the uh, trills. So then we're, we're going to hit uh, 15, and then we're going to start trilling 12 to 15. We're going to trill that for a bar or so, and then we're going to start raising the pitch of it. 
you can do this one of two ways. You can reach behind your fingers on the same string and start pulling it up. And then releasing, pulling it up, releasing. Or you can come down to the nut here, beyond the nut, and depress. And do it both ways. I get a lot more control doing it this way. So, uh, so you do that. I think that goes on for like two bars or something. And coming out of that is this lick. So that is uh, the uh, G and the B string at the 12th fret. You're going to slide out of that and then grab the bottom two open strings. And little, little chords here. Uh, we're on nine of the G and eight of the B. Move it up two places. And then bar 12 on the G and the B. And then this little chromatic lick, a descending chromatic lick. So that is 11 on the G, 12 of the B, and then just move it down. Letting the notes ring. And when you get to 7 of the G, And again, this section of the solo is really lost in the mix and difficult to hear exactly what he's doing, but this is pretty close. And then again, we're going to slide into 14 and bend it. That same little blues lick we played two or three times already. Finishing with two double stops there on the G and the B at the 12th fret. And slide out of it and that's the end of that solo so let's run through that whole solo slowly Turkey. And then we're back into the last verse. And the song and that's it i uh, i hope you enjoyed that and i hope that helped you out and i hope it was clear and precise uh so uh, anyway that is a great great song and a lot of fun to play and some solos that are a lot of fun to play and, and quite challenging and uh, you know these two were, were two of the 70s great blues based uh uh, rock and hard rock guitar players like I already said so anyway uh, you wanted to learn that one now you can so uh, good luck with it and have fun with it it's a lot of fun take care of yourselves ciao